Tank Davis has been put in an uncomfortable, compromised position. His upcoming fight against Hector Luis Garcia should be as a result of everything that has gone down recently, a test of wills. Let's talk about it. This coming Saturday, January 7th, on Showtime Pay-Per-View, we'll see the return to the ring of one of boxing's biggest stars when Javante Tank Davis takes on Hector Luis Garcia. This is going to be a test, as I stated in the opening, a test of wills, where Garcia, who has sprung on the scene in the year 2022 with an upset victory over Chris Colbert, he is now in a position to make a name for himself in the sport at the lightweight division and at the age of 31 still be in somewhat of a prime to show exactly what's going on with this Dominican's skill set and his desire to win. Having to face off against a champion, an experienced fighter, who is definitely a high profile fighter such as Tank Davis, Garcia may have hit the jackpot with this opportunity. But will he be able to stand up to what's going on. It will be something to see if his record of 16 and 0 with 10 KOs allows him to compete at this high level against Davis. Being a southpaw and standing 5'9 with a 67 inch reach, Garcia will look to box and to control the distance against Davis. He was able to do this against Chris Colbert quite easily, seeing that Colbert didn't really have much of a game plan outside of coming in and possibly landing shots. But once he seemed to get tagged by Garcia, the fight sort of went south for Colbert. Davis is not that type of fighter. Davis can be quite aggressive at times in his matches. And his recent performance over Roley Romero showed exactly that. Though he wasn't reckless against Romero, he was patient enough to allow Romero to run in to one of the most wicked of counter shots, a left hand straight to the chin, which now raised his record to 27 and 0 with 25 KOs. That's the highlight when you talk about a fighter like Tank Davis. He's a knockout puncher and he's exciting. He has fast hands and fast feet. He can get in and out and he can punch from angles, he can walk a guy down, or he can box. What will he elect to do against Garcia? With a big fight looming against another Garcia, Ryan Garcia, if he's victorious here, Davis will probably get the kind of payday that fighters like he are looking forward to. But Hector Garcia may have something to say about that. Due to recent outside of the ring distractions on Tank Davis's behalf, not of his own doing necessarily, 
Garcia may have an opportunity to slip through the crack. What if Davis proves up to the task and focused, he may get cracked by Tank Davis. The second fight besides Rolando Romero that he had, which was a December match against Isak Cruz, where Davis suffered a hand injury. Garcia's experience, his boxing ability, and his pedigree has to come to the forefront in order to slow the momentum that Tank Davis has. Now, will he be able to execute? Because Davis has the experience as well being in with better opposition. Mario Barrios, Leo Santa Cruz, Uriokas Gamboa. These fighters have all been victims of Tank Davis and his knockout power. But there's something else going on with Davis too. He's starting to hit a point in his career where he's defeating fighters different ways. It's not the same thing over and over, becoming a redundant circumstance where he wins in a singularity manner. He can box. And against Rolando Romero, he showed something other than just the quickly sighted talent and hand speed along with crushing punching power. He showed the ability to think. There was a point in the fight where his trainer, Mr. Ford, was stating that you should go ahead and get this kid out of there against Romero. And Tank remarked, he's still a little strong. I want to wait a little bit, soften him up. And that's exactly what happened. Patience is a virtue in boxing. And Davis is maturing enough to know that he has 12 rounds to work with. He doesn't have to go out there and blitz a guy in a single round. He can go out there and get a guy at his convenience. Now, will Davis be able to do this against Garcia, who does have ring IQ as well? He's the type of fighter that is calculating it's not that he has devastating power because he does not, but he's very smart and he will get in there and test Tank Davis's ring IQ. That's the thing here. This fighter is smart, intelligent. He has ring generalship and ring awareness. And with them both being southpaws, we're going to have to find out who's most comfortable performing in this particular match. I'm going to lean toward Davis being the one who can manage to make the proper adjustments. I do believe once Garcia gets a, a taste of Tank Davis's power, that's when the fight will change. And if I were advising Davis in the corner, I would not have him show that power very early. I would give it about three rounds in, if not the fourth round, before he starts to try to land something meaningful to deter Garcia or to even get him up out of there, unless Garcia makes a mistake which fighters can do, especially when they're being overcautious or they're being apprehensive. Now the two men can exchange. Davis being five foot five and a half, a little bit shorter, will have to have the mental strength to compete with a boxer 
who may not cooperate with him as other fighters such as Morero, Romero, excuse me, and Isaac Cruz, or even Mario Barrios. All three of those men waded in and at times were reckless, given Tank the opportunity to exploit their mistakes. Now, will Garcia be the type of fighter who will take the risk, or will he look to get Tank to make a mistake and exploit that? Again, a test of wills. And in light of Tank's recent outer ring experiences, it could be a bit of a distraction for him. Or Coach Ford may have him ready to take everything out on Garcia. Either way, we could be in for a very good fight. And even prior to the circumstances where Tank found himself having to deal with outside of the ring circumstances, I had said that this should be an interesting fight because of who Garcia is and we do not know about what he wants to accomplish in the sport and where he wants to be. He's even stated that he's ready to go to war, which I think is head games at the end of the day. Recently, Devin Haney spoke of doing work with Garcia in the ring, in the gym, and having to put him out. We don't know, gym stories are just that, they're gym stories. But you, every once in a while, there could be truth to what you hear. I am of the belief in this fight, Davis is going to shine. I do believe it will be his power at the end of the day that is going to make a difference. As I said, having 12 rounds to work with, Davis could come in and be prepared to take the fight late and deep and then decide to go after Garcia. Garcia is going to have to be alert 24-7 in this fight. But all it will take from Davis is one shot. He has one punch knockout power. And that is probably the way it's going to go. On the other hand, Garcia, if he's heady, he can stave off the attacks of Davis looking to land that one blow that can get Tank attention enough and make him box with him therein lies his chance but there is a reason why they picked Mr. Garcia who is moving up actually because he was at super featherweight and now he's going to be at lightweight he is a bigger guy but Tank has beaten up bigger men before He's a smart guy, can tank outwit him. The opportunities are there. The narratives are there. What do you think? This is Stormy B-Man. Shout out to the mighty LDBC and Liberated Perspective, a third eye view of the world. For more content such as this, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. Let me know what you think about this fight. I think Tank edges it out with a middle to late round knockout. But Garcia is definitely a live wire in this fight. Peace to everyone out there. And everyone, please remain safe.